So here we are on Barnacle and Dime. Um, I'm just gonna go over the, the map really quickly, give like a little review of it, and uh, talk about some features, some strategies, things like that. Um, this isn't gonna be a full-on like map mode of the day kind of breakdown, but I figured do a little bit of a, a recap on it since it is the newest stage in the game, and I'm sure people are interested in uh, what I'm thinking about it. So, um, the first thing that I'm gonna say about this map is that I would really like for this corner to about this corner to actually have map all throughout them. Um, this map needs to be wider in order to be the best version of itself that it can be. Um, if you maybe just take this map and like make it bigger, like take the exact same shape but expand it drastically, maybe you've gotten an idea there. But like the problem is just that once, say, the, the attacking team gets into, like, this position, it's a really nasty lockout. Like, put a crab tank right here and think about what it can see. It can see anyone who's coming out the far right side. It can see anyone who's coming out the far left side. It can hit that rail over there so you can't sneak around on that flank route. It can see the middle. It can harass people pretty deep into their spawn. What can't it see? There's, like... This little block right here where the, your entire team has to be huddled or they have to stay further back and spawn. Like, this is just not well designed to have something that's got that kind of a range hold up in the enemy side's base. And it's pretty easy to get someone up here. Like, look at how close we are to mid already. Like, all the, the you know, ball point or crab tank or whatever has to do is once you get pop, swim over to here up this wall, and now you're in lockout position. You're spawn locking them. Um, it doesn't take an awful lot, especially for a coordinated team, a, a high-level team that, you know, knows when to move up and is quick about it. Um, it's not going to take a lot for them to be able to really seize control of this map and lock the enemy team into a pretty small area of it. Like, this right here is all the enemy team is going to have if you're in that kind of a position. So... That, I think, is the, the big weakness of the map. Um, I do like the fact that it has an S-curve, um, because that makes it so that there are certain, you know, interesting ways of getting around the map. It's, it's not as linear. Um, I think there are, like, some interesting little shortcuts. Like, I like how easy it is to just hop over this wall if you want to get in here to this uh, alleyway. So, th there's some really interesting level geometry and some good design ideas. It's just that macro-scale problem of this map has too big of a choke point is not really great for it so overall i'd say this is like pretty mid um compared to other maps in s3 like maybe it's better than the majority of the the splatoon 3 unique maps but it doesn't hold a candle to s2's map design um like i'm comparing it to wahoo if i'm comparing it to a splatoon 2 map not one of the the better ones so um unfortunate that it ended up being that way but let's talk about the key positions here so um this spot right here is your primary snipe point this is definitely the the best one for like an e-leader a backline splatling something like that a lot of the time you can see down into this right side lane once you get all the way out here you can see out across the map um that left hand side over there is going to be pretty easily controlled by any of your frontliners who are like in this area because this is a pretty common spot for a midline or frontline weapon to hover around looking for an angle so they're probably going to see people coming in from that direction if that happens so you control a lot of what you need to out here and you can rotate over to here and use this for cover if you need like an angle on that corridor right there um or if you need to see something over here if you need to you know hit mid still so this is a really solid spot for a backline weapon and this is one of the first things that like the frontliners are going to need to target and get you out of the way of um, if you get pushed back on defense, you're definitely in some trouble, um, because of that, uh, lockout we talked about earlier, but it's important to use all of the routes that you have at your disposal to get out. Um, I see a lot of people right now who are just dropping out of spawn and then just dropping down here. Huge, huge mistake on every mode. This is a bowl right here. You have very little cover. You've got like this over here and this is easy to push. And then you've got this block over here, which is going to be a central 
point of focus for the enemy team anyway, because they're trying to do this. Um, so, like, you do not have a lot to work with once you drop here. Uh, do not drop off of that ledge hastily. Like, you stay up here, use your high ground, um, use maybe this position, maybe try to come around the right side and, you know, use this cover right here and get the drop on people from, you know, who are pulled up down in the corner. Don't drop out immediately because you're probably just going to drop into, like, someone's sight line and get splatted. That's the first thing everyone on the enemy team is going to be looking at when you come out. So maybe use some right side peeking from here, throw some bombs, get everything cleared before you drop in. Um, it is really important to cut off this, this right hand side because it takes deceptively long to get out to here. And the enemy team is going to have this that they can kind of poke from and then duck down below if you start to attack them. Um, the reason for that is that this is unpaintable right here. It's glass. Um, so, like, when we drop out, you know, this is how we spawn. And then we have to, like, maybe squid roll over to here if it's painted and come this way. Um, that takes a significant amount of time. Like, look at how far I have to move on the map to get from here all the way over to here. That's like I'm crossing through most of mid um, just to get that far. So yes, this is a kind of technically a part of our base, but it takes a pretty long time to get out there, and you need to consider that when you see, oh, hey, they might rotate in this direction. Well, if they're going to rotate in this direction, you need to be in position to defend that preemptively. You need to be pretty quick on getting up there, because otherwise they're going to get this high ground over you, and they're going to shut you down from actually being able to reach there. Um, on offense, uh, let's talk first about Rainmaker, since that's what we have here. So, once you grab Rainmaker, you've got the option to come down here. I don't really know why you would. Usually, if you're picking up the Rainmaker, it means you probably want to fight. So, you're probably either trying to fast break in this direction and get up, you know, that way. Um, incidentally, you cannot jump from here straight to the top of the Rainmaker pedestal. You will have to actually swim it up the wall to some degree. Or the other option that you have if you're still cleaning up the last few players is to maybe um, come up this direction and, you know, take some safe shots from the high ground up here for your teammates to, uh, waiting for your teammates to clear things out, out and then you go for the dunk. Um, otherwise, it's pretty linear on that first check. After this, though, you have some interesting ideas. The first thing I'm going to show you is a time trial comparing the three different routes that you have. Um, so you have this route to the left, where you go across here and then go for a jump across from the corner. You have the middle route, where you go up this block, jump, land on the glass, and then go for this jump. And then you have the far right steps, where you jump up to here and then jump across and swim the rest of the way. Um, never, when you're up here just like walk forward, jump again, and then shoot your way in paint. It is just about always going to be faster to jump from here and just jump straight across. You're gonna land and get maybe to like 16 points here where you were at maybe like 22 or 23 or something from right here. Um, and uh, if you have this way painted already, which is unlikely, but if you do, um, then you wanna be getting into the ink and swimming as fast as possible. You don't want really long air time because being in the air is slower than swimming so just get the corner start swimming and move as fast as you can that way it's also worth noting uh before i do this demo that it is possible to jump and land on top of the goal from this corner and also from this corner right here this will land you on top of the goal so either one of those options give you access to the instant ko if they uh, don't splat you while you're airborne I struggle a little bit to get all the way across. Um, it's very doable with like a lightweight weapon, a faster weapon. Uh, on Rainmaker, I figure if you're the team's Rainmaker carrier, you're probably going to be running at least a little bit of swim speed just so you can get around faster. And I imagine just a little bit of swim speed, I, I'm wearing exactly none right now, would probably get you all the way across and get you the automatic dunk instead of clipping the ledge a little bit like I did. But just know that that is a little bit precise, and if you're not running the swim speed for it, that it might be something where you're going to at least, like, run into the very top of the ledge before you're able to get over the side.
All right, so let's talk use cases here. Uh, far right side and far left side. So going up the steps and then squid roll here into jump across from here were almost completely identical. There was a 12 frame difference that you saw, but mind you, during those tests, I had no swim speed on. With one made of swim speed, I am able to make this jump and land directly on top. And when I checked, you know, how many frames I'm losing by not making it all the way, landing on the side and getting up to the top, it was about 12 frames exactly. Like, the amount of difference between those two routes was just about purely from my own execution. Like, it's, it's too precise to call which of them is faster based on the tests that I have done. Um, so they're pretty much exactly the same speed. Now, I would definitely say the left side is safer. And you've got this, you know, piece of cover to right side peek around. You can be right here and be shooting up over the top. And you can flush people out down here for your frontliners to go after. If you've got teammates with you and you're making a slow, steady push, this is definitely the way that you're favoring. Um, even if you get pushed back from that position, you have this to hide behind. If you get pushed back from there, you've got a couple of options. You could just back down here and maybe rotate around, maybe use this block for cover, maybe back up. You could also back up and use the rail and use this to get out and just back up to the rest of your team and get away that way. So much safer to go this way because you have so many different options and you've got cover pretty much the entire way until you're making the last sprint. You also have the option if you're here, instead of trying to make the jump, you could, if someone's maybe like a backline weapon that's back all the way uh, back in their base, back there, you could try to drop over here and use the goal as cover as you approach. Um, or you could, for example, get like a tent shield or an ink vac if you have one on your team in front of you to make the rest of this push so that you have cover all the way. Um, you can also from here rotate to making this jump if you aren't running a ton of swim speed and you don't trust yourself to make the corner jump. This one is more consistent. Um, and so that would be something that you could make with less swim speed fairly consistently without hitting the sidewall. The right side steps, I would say it, it's a little bit less safe because you're down here in a bowl. Um, you don't have a lot of cover and you're having to move across unpaintable turf. So you're going to be moving a little bit slower than you would under normal circumstances. If you're getting shot at, this is, this is not where you want to be. You want to be able to swim. You want to be able to move. Um, but if, for example, the, you know, Rainmaker gets picked up and it gets dropped like right here, your fastest route by far is jump, jump, and get in this way. Uh, and if the, you know, defense overcommits to left or something like that and you're just running away from them, then this is quick points. So those are all options that can definitely see some use. This one where you jump across is not that much slower. It's only like half a second or something. Um, and it does give you access to the easiest, you know, insta-dunk jump of the two in going this way. So, you know, all of this being painted ahead of time and everything, that's still a, a pretty viable option. Um, especially if you have teammates pushing up in front of you, this can be a great way, like if it's maybe dropped down over this ledge instead of having to jump and then jump to get up here. Um, if it's you pick it up right here, you could just go up over the top and be over here quicker. So, again, all of those options, fairly solid for the attacking team. Definitely case-by-case -case basis, which of those you're going to prefer. Not too much more to say about uh, splat zones, except that the zone is relatively small. A single Booyah Bomb will cap it by itself if it's uncontested. Um, that's not to say that, you know, the Booyah Bomb is going to be the best option, because usually people are going to be painting through it, but... Just know that you're probably going to have to, like, splat enemy players if you want to hold the zone for any length of time. Splat enemy players and then move up into lockout positions so that you can keep them off. Because if anyone gets onto the zone, it's not going to take a lot of effort to recap it. Um, there's not a lot of inertia in it. It's not something where you can, like, notice somebody's there and then turn and react and get them off the zone before they neutralize. They're going to neutralize real quick. Uh, tower control. So our first... Uh, checkpoint here is going to be right here, which means that you're going to need to clear this area right here. This, like we said, is one of the strong uh, backline positions. Uh, you do not want a ball point standing right here shooting at you while you're riding the tower. Uh, this is going to get bombarded with specials early on, uh, which is going to make it, you know, incentivized as like a frontliner who's defending, 
to maybe try and approach the tower from the other side. Because if they're looking over there, then you come over from like here or you come around the backside from here. Flank routes that are relatively safe to get to. Um, this is going to pose a bit, really big problem for the tower riders. Um, so as you push up with the tower, one of the places you're going to need to clear out is this right here. But another area that you'll want to make sure you have some control of is this area down here. If you can keep them out of those two spots, first checkpoint is probably going to fall. We'll move it through that checkpoint. Waddle, waddle, waddle. So from here, tower is not super easy to contest, but one place you will have to watch out for is this here, um, the area around that rail. And anything down here is also, you know, if it's got like a, a blaster hitbox or something, that's going to be potentially dangerous, and so you might need a frontliner to dedicate some attention to that. Once you get to this checkpoint, you have, you know, this area that you could just take control of. Like, I could easily see it being a play for, like, a splash to get here and just pop Crab Tank right away and get somebody else to ride while they have it. Um, or whoever else is going to be able to hold this area down really well. Um, at this point, you probably need some pressure to be on this area for sure. Just, like, getting a frontliner up here so that you can safely exist on the tower. Um, and you're also going to have to watch out for anything long range to be in one of those great positions. Because um, those are probably going to pose a threat. But uh, the ground level down here should be really easy to control. And then it's coming up the wall here. So that's a relatively difficult place for the defending team to stop you from ground level. You're much more worried about what's going to be up here waiting for you when you get over the top um, than you are about what's below at this point. In Clan Blitz, Basket is in a, a pretty reasonable position. One thing that you really want to be careful about here on defense is how slow it is to get over here and start defending this. We talked about this with Rainmaker, but it's even worse with Clan Blitz because in Rainmaker, you can go up here and just swim all the way across, but with Clan Blitz, you have to make a little bit of a jump uh, or you know drop through the grates or something. So defending this spot right here is actually, you know, it's pretty slow to get there out of spawn. And you can hit clams from pretty far back here. So like I can hit them from up here. I believe I can jump through them from out here. Maybe not quite. Okay. But you can jump out from behind and throw and then drop back. Um, so you have to be worried about people being back here. This is probably one of the best places to throw clams from. And it's going to be especially useful to have some kind of AoE weapon to chip this around the ledge to get people out of that. You're not going to be able to throw individual clams from this position unless you jump throw them. And then here's a look at the power clam throwing range. So you can get it from about out here. Um, this is always a guide, this kind of bump to where you can throw clams from. So... You get... Oh, did I just... Wow. So hey, don't miss a power clam on this map. That would be bad. So from here, you can be back a little bit further if you jump throw. Um, but it's about like here or so that you need to be. And then you're not going to be able to throw the power clam until you get pretty far forward. Um, so maybe like here or so you got to be right up against the glass to be able to get that in. Now, if you manage to somehow get up here on the enemy's side, you can reach with a power clam from here. Um, so this is something that, like, if you've got someone who's really trying to flank super hard, this is a place where they might try to give jumps. Um, and anything up here, really, they're probably going to try and give jumps for. But uh, this place in particular is nice because from here, they have high ground over the attackers as they try to approach this spot. Um, so it's really important not to let someone in here. Now, it's pretty easy not to let someone in here because they have to walk across this glass, turn around, paint this, and then climb up this wall. So this whole time that they're climbing up the wall, they have their back turned to spawn. But if you do end up letting someone slip through here, this could become a problem for you. That's what I'm thinking about uh, Barnacle and Dime here. Um, I give it a 6 out of 10 for the pun. Um and a 6 out of 10 for the map design as well. Um, that major issue that it has is the, you know, defining characteristic of it for me. But 
you know, within that problem, because a lot of the new Splatoon maps have had that same problem of being a hallway, I think there are definitely some really interesting choices here. I like that there are varied routes for, like, Rainmaker. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff to happen inside the uh, opposing side base. It's just... It's going to be really attacking side favored, I think. Um, I think it's going to be really difficult to defend. So be really careful to, uh, in, in the neutral engagement, not to lose control. Because a strong team is going to start moving really fast and start locking you out. And from there, it feels like it's going to be really hard to win. So hope that helps. And uh, let me know what you thought, if there's anything more that uh, you'd like to know about or, you know, any any way that you'd like to see this kind of uh, a video structured because I could do one of these on all the other maps if you really wanted me to. Just uh, the map mode of the day thing was only so popular back when I was doing it for S2. So if that's a format that we'd like to come back, be interesting, I interested to know about that so that uh, I can start tailoring that to what people are interested in hearing about. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one.